We had uh, clips of Baron Corbin bowling. Well, they were they're they were doing cross promotion with bowl with the uh, PBA. PBA, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had one of their guys. I guess maybe Baron Corbin's probably, you know, someone who can bowl a little bit. Um, I'm sure they sent, you know, I mean, they didn't want to send a guy who's going to go out there and throw gutter balls. Well, so. he he knocked down nine pins. So yeah, that's yeah. certainly. But I mean, he gave ball. the deal was is that they wanted a, a wrestler there to present the championship belt to you know one of the PBA stars, basically. So. Yeah. We got the return of Sonia Deville, and what a nothing happened to return it was. She's just standing backstage after nine months gone, and she runs into Shane and Zoe. Sonia says, I'd like to talk to you too. Zoe said, Okay. And then Shane goes, No. Whatever you want to try and sell us, we're not interested. And they walk off. Yeah. That was the return of Sonia. That was actually worse oh. than Seamus's return. Yeah. But the deal is, is it's, it's part of a, a long term storyline, clearly, where. Um, She's trying to recruit uh, Zoe Stark, and Shane is trying to keep Zoe Stark from going. So, you know, I mean, it's the start of a story. It's not just this one-off thing. I mean, whether the story works or not, that time will tell. But it's just day one. I mean, I didn't. It's nothing to say anything bad about. It's just the start of a story. So then we had Finn and JD versus Miz and Truth for the tag team titles, and the more I watch WWE. And they're kind of letting the handcuffs off a lot of these guys in terms of their work. The more the Miz just stands out like a sore thumb. I mean, this was such a pedestrian. He's trying. He's he's trying though. He's doing dives and stuff that he never did before, and he's in his forties. So. This was just this was like a pedestrian TV match. Supposed to be a world tag team title match. Didn't feel that way at all. And well, uh, our truth's got no cred either. I mean, other than doing the comedy. I mean, it's not like any. You know, he's in his fifties. I mean, it's not like. Yeah, you know, when it comes to at that at that level, when you're talking about guys like Finn Balor and JD, I mean, Miz and our truth, I mean, it's not at the same level. They're you're not, you know, they're not going to be as athletic or anything. Even though um, our truth can do some cool things, um, I mean, our truth's basic thing is just do all John Cena moves, and you know, he's out there, he's very over because of his comedy. Yeah, but the difference is that R-Truth does all of John Cena's moves, and he can do them just fine. And Miz is still trying to do Daniel Bryan's moves, and they look terrible. Yes kicks in the corner. Oh, my God. Anyway, Carlito tried to interfere. Braun Strowman came down. Braun chases JD around the ring. JD slides into the ring, gets hit with an AA, and is pinned. So Miz and Truth retain the tag titles. Yeah. Not well, much to this one. Didn't expect him to lose to, to that team. Becky told Lyra, you've got this. She starts heading out, and suddenly Liv shows up, and uh, Liv sucker punches Lyra, lays her out. So Bronson's backstage with Sammy, and he says, uh, don't worry about Chad. It's just mind games, but I just care about money. And Saturday, I'm going to get my biggest payday yet. And he walks off, and then Otis shows up. Sammy says, look who it is, the guy who cost me the match. I expected better out of you. I expect that crap from Chad Gable, but not from you. Maybe I was wrong about you. And uh, Otis says, Sammy, I just want to say I'm sorry. I really am. And Sammy looks at him and he goes, damn it, I know you are because you're a good guy. And he gives him the big speech about how Chad isn't a good guy. He thinks he's your coach, but I've been in your shoes before, and you've got to start listening to the fans. And he leaves, and everybody's chanting Otis's name. So uh, it's coming at some point. Oh, yeah. Becky came out for a promo. And she's interrupted by Liv. And they went back and forth for uh, quite a while. And Liv is basically on her Liv Morgan revenge tour. Wants to win the title. Becky says, what are you going to do once you win the title? And Liv's response was, I'll be the champion. That's basically what happened here. So just to build for the pay-per-view. It was fine. Priest is yelling at Judgment Day for losing the tag title match. And he said, Carlito, you're supposed to earn your keep. And Dom says, well, J.D. was supposed to take out Strowman. And Priest says, J.D., you go to Priest, you get a match with Strowman next week. And he storms off. Mm. And Finn's like, this guy's right. we got to get back on track. And he demanded J.D. go talk to Pierce. So J.D. and Braun Strowman next week on Raw. Well, it'll be quick. It sure will. Karrion Cross goes up to Woods and says, there's always more time to turn things around. Basically the same message he gave Kofi last week. We're supposed to try and figure out what's going on. Well, I mean, they're going to do New Day and AO, and um, you know, AOP. AOP. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's a match. 
So then we had a four-way number one contenders match for the tag team title shot, women's tag team titles. Shane and Zoe, Caden and Katana, Ivy and Maxine, and Dakota and Kyrie. And uh, everyone survived. It's the best I can say. It was very choreographed. There was not a lot of heat early. Then it was very choreographed there at the end. They had Maxine in there way too long. And finally, Kyrie hit her with an elbow. Zoe choked her out. And they double teamed and pinned her. So, uh, Zoe and Shayna, number one contenders for the women's tag team titles. So they'll be wrestling Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair relatively soon. Yep. We had Kaiser doing an interview, and he buried Sheamus, so they're going somewhere with that one. And then Drew McIntyre showed up and cut a promo about the upcoming match at some point with Damian oh, Priest. It's, it's going to be Glasgow. Glasgow, yeah. They haven't announced that yet, but... They have not announced I it, think no. that's pretty clear. Yeah. So Chad Creed's are laughing backstage, and up walks Otis. And Otis admits he apologized to Sammy. And at first, Chad is upset, but then he's thinking, oh, you're trying to butter this guy up. Tugging at his heartstrings. Good job. He goes, we're going to go to Saudi, and you're going to help me win that title, right? So we know, the fin- we know the finish there. Otis is kind of like, ah. Uh, and Chad makes him say no matter what. So, yeah. A lot of telegraphing on these shows. Mm. But at the well, same time, this Queen of the Ring and King of the Ring, whoosh, right over my head. Yeah. I had I had a couple people I thought were going to win, and they're out. Then the main event was Gunther and Jey Uso in a tournament match. They had a good match. It was a good match, but it's the same thing with Jey Uso. It's like he's still working 2014 WWE style. He makes his comeback, and it's just a big move and long pause. Hit a big move, long pause. And then... Like, it's such a slow comeback that they start rushing at the end. and They, 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 were, they were late on time. Yeah. So they by the end, they're late, and Gunther just starts chopping him. And then uh, they did a spot at the finish where Jay hits a desperation spear, but he accidentally knocks the ref down. And so uh, he goes up top, he hits the big splash, but he's selling. And then by the time he gets there, the ref kind of wakes up. So they didn't do the thing where, like, the ref is down and, the you know, the crowd's chanting to 30 because Gunther's down. The ref is only a little bit slow, but he's slow enough that Gunther kicks out. And then they were totally late. And so Gunther kicks out of the guy's finish and then just chops him, grabs him, puts him in a head and arm, and the referee stops it, and they're off the air. Yeah. So Gunther beat him, you know, clean. Real clean. With a new finish. Yeah, real clean. And I was I was pretty surprised by how clean they beat Jey Uso. I was very surprised. I mean, I, I would, wouldn't have been surprised at, at all at Gunther winning, but I was very surprised how clean it was because, I mean, realistically, you know, until Punk gets back or Rollins gets back, Jay's the number one babyface. Not only that, he's the one, number one babyface, and he actually is one of the most over guys on all of Raw. They've oh, yeah. been pushing him as one of the biggest stars. The interviews are all about what a huge star he is, and they just beat him clean. So, yeah. well, well, Gunther's going to the finals, so I they mean, certainly put him over strong. Yeah. To uh, face Randy Orton. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.